You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Wednesday, January 3rd. A USA Today Suffolk University poll reveals a noticeable shift in the U.S. political landscape. Former President Donald Trump, representing the Republicans, has edged ahead of incumbent President Joe Biden with a slight lead in voter support. This poll, involving 1,000 likely voters, indicates that 39% favor Trump, of 37% support Biden, and a significant 17% lean towards third-party voting. Notably, Trump's lead amplifies when third-party candidates are included, showing him ahead at 37% against Biden's 34 A striking aspect of this poll is the shift in minority voter preferences. Trump is leading among voters voters under 35 and Hispanic voters with a notable 20% of black and Hispanic voters considering a third-party choice. David Paleologos of Suffolk's Political Research Center highlights the impact of this trend, saying, quote, a young voter or a person of color voting third party is a vote away from President Biden and a vote away from President Biden is a vote for Donald Trump. This trend is corroborated by an NBC News poll, which reported a decline in Biden's approval ratings among African-American and Hispanic voters since 2021. New York Times' Nate Cohn also observed a significant erosion in Biden's support among minority voters crucial to his 2020 victory. In research by Ryan Burge, Associate Professor of Political Science at Eastern Illinois University, a significant divergence in abortion views among American political party members is highlighted. The study reveals that religious Democrats align more closely with their secular counterparts than with religious Republicans on abortion. The data illustrates a stark contrast. 93% of secular Democrats and 79% of religious Democrats support the right to abortion, compared to only 25% of religious Republicans. Furthermore, the study examined shifting opinions over nearly 50 years, revealing a growing support for abortion among secular Democrats, from 70% in 2010 to 87% in 2022. In contrast, Republican support for abortion rights has declined, especially among religious members. In a recent interview with the Christian Post, Seth Kaplan, a Johns Hopkins University lecturer and expert in fragile states, highlights the growing issue of, quote, social poverty in the United States. Kaplan, author of Fragile Neighborhoods, Repairing American Society, One Zip Code at a Time, identifies a dual nature of social poverty, distress in economically challenged areas, and isolation in materially wealthy neighborhoods. He emphasizes the need for stronger community bonds and local institutions, particularly churches, to address this issue. Kaplan criticizes churches in America for being too secular and consumer-focused, urging them to adopt a more communal and place-based approach. He believes that churches should be countercultural, emphasizing community building over politics to strengthen social fabric and support neighborhoods. Kaplan's vision is for a society where people know and support their neighbors, creating strong, interconnected communities. In a poignant display of solidarity with persecuted Christians, New York City pastor William Devlin attended the wedding of Agnes Andimi, daughter of a Nigerian pastor beheaded by Boko Haram in 2020. Devlin, a missions pastor at Infinity Bible Church and founder of Redeem and Widows and Orphans Ministries, along with human rights lawyer Emmanuel Ogebe, traveled to McCurdy Benway State for the ceremony. This act aligns with his broader vision as evidenced by his receipt of the President's Volunteer Service Award for his global efforts. The wedding coincided with the 12th anniversary of the Boko Haram-led 2011 Christmas Day church bombing and recent Christmas attacks on Christians in Plateau State. Ogebe criticized the Nigerian government's inadequate response to these attacks and the lack of global outrage compared to other regions. Taysir, or Tas Saada, a former member of the Fatah political party and Palestinian Liberation Organization, now a Christian convert, expresses a profound belief in a spiritual shift among Muslims in Gaza. Saada, 73, shared with Israeli-American journalist Joel C. Rosenberg his conviction that the ongoing violence and upheaval in the Middle East are signs of an imminent end of times. However, amidst these turbulent times, Saada sees a silver lining, a growing disillusionment with Hamas and radical Islam among many Muslims, potentially leading them towards Christianity. Saada, who detailed his journey from hatred to faith in his autobiography, Once an Arafat Man, recounted his transformation after moving to the United States in 1974, where interactions with a Christian friend sparked a radical change in his perspective and life. He now plans to return to Gaza post-war to contribute to what he sees as a significant spiritual awakening. 
Sa'ad's story illustrates a dramatic personal evolution from fighting under Yasser Arafat to embracing Christianity and now aspiring to play a role in the potential spiritual transformation of many in Gaza. 2023 marked a pivotal year in recognizing the dangers of gender ideology, particularly gender-affirming care for minors. The Christian Post's award-winning podcast, Generation Indoctrination, Inside the Transgender Battle, delves into this pressing issue in its third season. The series reflects on state-level legislative efforts to ban experimental gender medicalization treatments for minors, initiated by Representative Robin Lundstrom's SAFE Act in Arkansas. Voices across the political spectrum, including radical feminist Democrat Kara Dansky, criticize the widespread adoption of transgender ideology. Episode 2, Out Now, highlights California's influential role in promoting transgender rights, even allowing male prisoners to transfer to women's facilities based on self-identification. Parent struggles against their children's involvement in transgender social contagion are detailed in Episode 3, while Episode 4 focuses on the regrets of detransitioners who underwent irreversible procedures. You can listen to Generation Indoctrination right now by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes or searching for Generation Indoctrination in the podcast player of your choice. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Megan and Matt Chopek, both deaf from a young age, are leading a transformative ministry at Redemption Hill Church to address the spiritual needs of the deaf community. Their initiative aims to dismantle misconceptions and prevent others from experiencing the church hurt they endured due to language barriers and lack of understanding within churches. They emphasize that the gospel is about a spiritual, not just physical healing. The couple's personal experiences, including Matt's cochlear implant surgery and their previous church's failure to accommodate the deaf, underscore the challenges deaf individuals face in religious settings. Their efforts have inspired their current church's senior pastor to learn sign language, reflecting a growing awareness and adaptation to the needs of the deaf community. You can read more about this story and all the headlines from today by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post Daily Podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.